lots of people getting into virtual reality and thus also getting into sim racing. A question many people will ask is, uh, do I need a rig and what rig should I get? Well, uh, here we have assembled three sim rigs that uh, I think represent uh, different parts of the, the market in terms of functionality, convenience, and uh, basically, will my wife kill me if I buy one of these? So we're going to go through each of these rigs that I've got here, talk about the differences, and uh, really help you decide which rig is the best option for you. Now, starting things off, we've got the trusty Wheel Stand Pro. And uh, there's a couple of companies that make rigs like this uh, that basically represent uh, I can hide my uh, simulation hobby away in the corner rig. And uh, well, they're absolutely fantastic, these little rigs, if you want something that you can just uh, get away when you're not doing sim racing. And what's really nice with these small rigs is that they don't cost much money, they're small, um, you can also fit them under your desk with them representing a, a better solution than uh, just attaching your wheel on your desk. But also, you get the benefit of uh, really you can set things up in a solid position that's reliable. So each time you come and sit down to it, uh, the, the rig is basically the same, which does help with sim racing because you know where your, where your feet are going to be spot on and you've got your wheel angle set up and you can adjust the angle of your wheel and get everything all perfect. Now, the worst Stand Pro is actually pretty cool because you can adjust the height as well and uh, some of these other aspects of angle. It's one of the nice things with worst Stand Pro is it's probably one of the smallest and easiest to hide away of this uh, type of uh, mini collapsible rig. Now, in terms of uh, negatives of these mini rigs, uh, with the Wheel Stand Pro, one negative uh, that seems to bother some people more than others is that you have this central column. Nicely with the Wheel Stand Pro, because it's more near the groin, it doesn't actually get in the way of you. You can heel and toe with it, so that's not really a problem, but some people find that annoying. But um, because the, the rig itself is completely separate to your chair, you still need uh, some solution for the actual seating. Um, for sim racing, and a lot of people starting out, if, you know, if, you're, if you're driving at a desk, the best option is to get a, a very minimal chair that doesn't have any wheels on it and isn't an office chair that rotates. But most people don't have that to hand in the office. Most people have an office chair. Um, so uh, the two main things there with an office chair, if you start getting better brakes and you could put Club Sport V2 pedals on this Wheel Stand Pro, um, is you need something to lock your wheels down. One solution to that is to actually put uh, shoes on the wheels, which keeps your chair from rolling back. And the other thing is that you're going to get left and right sway with your chair. So it's not perfect, but as a, as a start off solution, if you want to, if you're sort of just testing the water with sim racing, you want something that gives a little bit uh, of adjustment uh, and is better than putting your wheel on a desk and can be hidden away whilst keeping everything in a neat little uh, package together, your wheel and pedals always together, then something like the Wheel Stand Pro is absolutely fantastic. And uh, I'd say the best, uh, I'm not going to get killed by my partner sim racing device. Moving on from the Wheel Stand Pro, we get the Race Room uh, R1. 1000, I think it's the R1000 or the 1100, but it's basically, we've got the, the entry level race room rig. Now, what this, what this represents is that sort of category of uh, somewhat budget, somewhat collapsible, kind of convenient and kind of solid rig in that the, the, the price range of between 150 to 300 pounds. Now you, you'll find uh, rigs like this made by uh, uh, PlaySeat, uh, GTO Mega, there's a whole bunch of them and they all vaguely do the same sort of thing in that as I say they're somewhat collapsible, a little bit, a little bit flimsy uh, but they do offer a little bit more rigidity and solidity than the Wheel Stand Pro. So you know again if you're, if you're short on space and you want something that's uh, convenient to hide away still, it's a little bit more clunky and uh, you probably would want to just leave this up in like a, in a spare room or you know, in, your, in your games room or something. If you've got a little bit less space, you can hide this away. And fairly quickly, even if you've got the, uh, the wheel and pedals attached to it, you can fairly quickly uh, squish it down.
so you can fairly quickly squish it down and get it into a more compact unit with you even being able to take the uh, you can take the uh, back part off completely of course you could just leave your, your pedal and your steering wheel attached this front part and then you can put your wheel you can put the uh, the chair in the corner and this and this somewhere else you could put it on your mantelpiece as a demonstration that you're really into sim racing for all those people that want to know about it but as I say, it's, it's a good in-between of the Wheelstand Pro and the more pricey, more solid rigs. The benefit of these larger rigs, of course, is that you are getting a seat that's not going to move and is reasonably solid and something that as a whole is a lot more solid than a Wheelstand Pro. Um, if you put, you know, a, a top-end... Uh, AccuForce wheel or OSW on this it's going to bend and flex it's not that strong but if you're putting something like a let's move forward so you can see this on the camera if you're putting something like a, a G25 T500 T300 uh, one of those sort of Fanatec Porsche wheels or anything like that uh, you know this would be more than solid enough it has nice um, adjustability again where you can you know you can pull it apart but you can also bring this forwards and backwards so you can get the depth of your wheel sorted out. Uh, there's not that much adjustment for the for the height of your wheel though, which is a shame. Uh, again, that varies from rig to rig with this uh, this sort of this type of semi collapsible rig, and you really need to look and see what's important to you. I mean, if you're a ginormous person or a, especially a small person, you might need that extra uh, height adjustment to get things just right. But it's not a bad it's not a bad solution. Uh, as I say many people make them this just happens to be the race room version they're still race room is still selling them not this specific one but they're selling basically the same design and you can also get them with different branding if that's important to you uh you know but not amazing i'd say a little bit overpriced for what you get but it does the job and it's a little bit of a step up if you've got more space than a wheel stand pro so moving this rig out of the way And we go on to the, uh, the sort of fully fledged sim rig. Uh, and what we've got here is the Simitech K2 cockpit, which I put on little sliders, which make it really convenient to move around. If you don't put the sliders on, it weighs a ton and it's a beast. Now, to me, the Simitech K2 cockpit represents the sort of higher tier, higher tier of sim, uh, sim rig. Now, uh, strangely, it's not actually that expensive, this cockpit. Uh, because some are tech and mental and they, they probably could be selling it for more but for a rig that's this this uh, solid uh, and with the amount of features it has generally you're looking at spending between uh, 250 to 600 and and up uh, in this case I think you can get some tech cockpit for about um, I think it's 230 for the basic rig without the chair which is an absolute steal though you do have to pay extra if you want the gear shifter we should put the uh, button box here and the shifter on the mount for that and the uh, the pedal tray and then of course like the race room rig you have to pay extra if you want the uh, the monitor mount and uh, for both race room and this you can get a uh, triple screen or tv mounts you could put a uh, osw and Force wheel on this and it'll be absolutely fine uh, when you do add your screens onto it the solidity means that with this rig it's a lot more stable than, for example, the race room rig. When you start putting extra screens on the race room rig, especially if you're using better wheels, that starts to shake about a lot. Um, whereas this is a lot more stable. And with the, with the more expensive, more solid rigs, you tend to get more adjustment again. So this has got um, in-out adjustment of the, of the depth of the wheel. It's got a lot of height adjustment on the, uh, on the brackets here, so you can lift this right up and right down. Um, and you can also change the, the tilt angle. And then you've got the advantage of it uh, having a very solid front pedal plate so you can uh, you know you could use proper high-end high load pedals uh, I've got the Club Sport V2 pedals on this at the moment and you can actually I've mounted the Club Sport I've mounted the Club Sport V2 pedals to uh, the, the race room and the wheel stand pro and it actually works on all of them but I found with the wheel stand pro I had to um, turn the sensitivity of the brake up a little bit because if you really start stamping on the Wheel Stand Pro and uh, if you don't have the Wheel Stand Pro wedged against the wall, obviously you'll either push the chair backwards or the Wheel Stand Pro unit will move. So 
real realistically, I, I would probably want to stick the World Stand Pro with uh, your standard wheels for like your G29, uh, you know, and your basic T300 pedals. Um, the club sports on the race room chair. Uh, there's quite a little bit of uh, quite a bit of flex on the plate that the pedals mount to, but again, because this is an absolute tank, there's uh, you know there's no flex at all, and you get the advantage with these more expensive rigs of being able to angle the pedals. Which if you know if you spend a lot of time sim racing and you get particular about your your, your pedal angles, uh, that can be quite important. Uh, and again, it depends if you start getting really high quality brakes, the angle is even more important because you want to be able to put that pressure on without damaging your knee because if, you, if your knee's at different angles and you're really putting brake pressure on you'll start putting a lot of wear on your knee uh, especially if you're doing sort of one two or even endurance racing uh, multi-hour endurance racing your knee's going to start noticing it if your pedal angles aren't comfortable for yourself so but uh, the, what, you, what you're really sacrificing with a big rig like this um, is the the ability to just put it away easily putting it on coasters does help you can move it around but realistically this is going to be something that you're going to have set up and, and not move especially by the time you start putting the uh, proper monitor stands on it and you've got your cables wired up and you know it's not the kind of thing that you want to unplug and then hide in the corner or take apart it's the kind of thing that's a, a permanent fixture basically this is the uh, the type of uh, of uh, sim rig that will destroy your relationship. So if you want to lose your relationship with, with your partner or you just want to make someone very angry, this is the rig to go for. But in terms of the actual impact for, for quality of sim racing, you won't get you won't get better than a nice durable solid rig. Um, the only the only option Separate to this, that, I, that personally I would consider outside of getting, uh, if you've got the space, outside of getting a solid rig, the only option that's better is building your own rig. And uh, actually, since, since the Simitech K2 cockpit, it's probably quite hard to actually do that competitively with price. The best uh, home-built rigs I've seen are ones where people haven't built the, uh, the sort of chair unit and the back unit. What, what they've done is they've just built the, uh, the pedal box and they put that under their desk and then use a separate mounting system so it's just getting the pedals in the perfect angle and they're resting against the wall and then they've got their own uh, sort of chair set up using a like a, a custom uh, car chair that they've bought and then they mount that to a box again it's a little bit of a faff but that's probably the only thing that you'll really do that that can compete with uh, for, you know for 230 pounds you start seeing people put together crazy uh 80 20 rigs that, that cost quite a lot but in terms of customization and getting exactly what you want, I don't think anything can, can beat them. So really, um, I think that gives you an introduction <laughs> to, uh, to, to the different types of sim rigs you can get. I could see how each rig would uh, benefit uh, different types of people. The wheel stand pro, being able to uh, fold up nicely and hide if you live in a small place, really convenient and it's super cheap. The race room rig, a little bit more solid, a little bit better if, you can't, if you've got the space to leave it set up, but you can move it if you need to. Um, Price-wise, you can get um, rigs in, in that race room category for a good price, so it can work out cheap to get a, a good solid setup for cheap. And then lastly, as I say, this, uh, this sort of full-scale tank rig um, where you can end up spending from 250 to to thousands of pounds and that's that will be for people that are super serious or really want to consider mounting multi screens and all that business and the sky is the limit uh, personally i i use this uh, this simitech k2 copy now but uh, through through the years i've used each of these rigs um you know from for years i think i had the world stand pro for about a year and a half i've had the uh, the race room rig for about eight or nine months and uh, they've they've all worked really well i've done the job really well and the, each of these have uh, provided a better experience than just sticking the wheel on the desk so definitely uh, worth considering especially if you're just looking to get into vr uh, into uh, sim racing because you've seen vr now um if you want to know more about each rig uh, in particular review of each individual uh, each individual rig check out our review of them i'll put the links on the screen to the wheel stand pro uh and the simitech k2 cockpit we didn't do a review of the race room rig for some reason but we do have videos of us using it so you can get an idea of how much it flex 
uh, when we drive. So uh, there you go. Thanks for watching this uh, for this video, this little introduction to the three types of main types of sim rig that you can get. And uh, I will see you in the in the next video that we do. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and feel free to ask any questions. I help you out if you're sort of weighing up in your mind which rig you want to buy, what type of rig you want to buy, and I'll point you in the right direction. Worth checking out uh, our sim racing on Reddit if you want to ask questions there. You might get downloaded at first, but the, the friendly people will help you out eventually. So uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video that we do. Thanks for watching and goodbye.